Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about how to insert data in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. So obviously for a database system, the ability to insert data into the system is extremely important. Um, so while this may be a topic that many of you are already very familiar with, I thought it was very worthwhile to go over. Um, so specifically, we're gonna really focus on how to insert data in X++ code. Um, I'm gonna brush over how we can insert data using a form. Typically, if you have a form such as this, the invent item group form, which is responsible for entering data for an item group, you would add your data source to the form, and then you would add um, controls to your form where you set the data source equal to your data source and your data field equal to the field that you want to save the data to. Then simply by using the form, entering data in and clicking the save button, the system is naturally going to insert that new record or update the existing record to the database. So this is really phenomenal, makes it really easy for us to insert data and save data. But what if we wanna go a little uh, deeper and insert data using X++? How would we do that? Um, first, you know, where would we do that? Sometimes you'll have a button like a process button or something else that when you click, you need to insert data. So you might insert this X++ uh, code in a clicked method. You might have a batch job that's reading from a staging table and inserting data such as creating a sales order. You need the ability to to write X++ code to insert data. Um, and then lastly, just in this case, I'm actually gonna show you how to create a runnable class or job where we could just insert data as a test. You wouldn't typically do this in a production environment. This is just a one-off for a developer to see how this works. So let's go ahead and get started on that. If you first create a new uh, finance and operations project, as I've shown in a previous video, next you can right click on your project, select add new item, and then select Dynamics 365 items, and then scroll down to where it says runnable class parentheses job. And then you can give it the name of your job. I just called mine insert data right here, and then you click add. What that's going to do is it's going to create a class with a static main method and just an open close parentheses. So it looks like that, um, very basic. It allows you to put some code in here and run that code really quickly as a one-off process. Again, you would normally have this type of code in a button or a batch process or a modified method or somewhere else, but for the sake of showing you how these code works, I've put it in a runnable job. So the most common way is to actually um, instantiate a table buffer. So in this case, invent item group is the table that we want to insert data into. And so I've typed invent item group as the type of object. Then I need to give the name of our variable. And it's a best practice to normally name um, your variable the exact same name as your table um, because then it's, it's really easy to understand what is the underlying table we're trying to insert. After that, we need to set um, values, set fields on this table buffer variable. And I can do that by just even deleting the dot and re-adding. And I'm going to get IntelliSense that's going to show me um, all the methods I could call, but also the different fields that I can call on um, this table buffer. So here's all our methods. Higher up, these icons are my different fields. So in this case, I'm going to set item group ID equal to puzzles, add a semicolon, and then I'm going to call dot insert. Um, dot insert is this uh, method that exists on every single table buffer in the system. It's part of the base underlying class that makes up any kind of table buffer. And that's really fantastic. What that does is it tells the system to take the data we've loaded into this table buffer variable and generate a SQL statement 
that inserts this data into this underlying table. So in many other languages, we'd have to keep track of a SQL connection string. We'd have to generate the SQL string based on this data. Uh, we don't have to do any of that in X++, which is really amazing. We just set our table buffer, call insert, and we're done. Um, so before, uh, one thing to note about calling insert, uh, we do need to make sure that we're setting any required fields on this table. So underlying in SQL, you can have what are called um, unique indexes or primary indexes. And typically those fields that are part of those primary indexes um, are required. If we don't set all those, we're, we're going to have problems later on. So how do we know what are the minimum number of fields that we need to set before we call insert? The way we can do that is we can search for our table, invent item group, as I've done here. We can then right click and say open designer. This will bring up the designer where we can see the different fields that we have. But even more important, I can go to the indexes and then expand the index that I see allowed duplicate set to no. And I can see that, OK, this is my primary index. Um, if allowed duplicates was set to yes, that's an index that I can kind of ignore um, for the purposes of this. It, it's only need, it's used for performance, but I want to find any that say allowed duplicates set to no. Any fields in here have to be unique. So that's the other thing to keep in mind. If I'm inserting data um, that's not unique, I'm going to get an error message. So very likely before you insert data, you want to first run a select statement or call the find method and check, do we already have a record um, in the database uh, or in this table for this value? But if not, then um, let's make sure we set this to a non-blank value. The other thing we can do is we can select each one of these fields and there's actually a mandatory property. And so you, uh, as a developer, you can set this mandatory property to yes, which means if any developer tries to insert um, a record into this table and the value on this field is not set to anything, then it'll throw an error. So I want to kind of go through here and see if there's any fields that are set to yes. And sure enough, I can see my primary key item group ID is set to yes. So I need to make sure I'm setting that field. And then if I scroll through the others, I'm going to find that none of these others actually are mandatory. So um, if we go back to our code, we are setting the bare minimum of fields for us to insert. We can absolutely uh, set more fields before we insert, but we definitely need that one. I'm then going to have an info statement and say insert done. And uh, once I run this code, the way I run this code is I can right click on my runnable um, class slash job and I can say set as startup object. When I click that, it's going to make this class bold. And when I click the start button, it's going to go ahead and run this class and it's going to look for a main method to run and go ahead and run this code. If I do that, it'll take a little bit. So I'm just going to uh, jump to where I've already run it. Um, and actually, um, after I run it, I'm not going to get any output other than my info statements. So in order to look at the underlying table to see did it actually insert data, I can use SQL Server Management Studio and write a select statement to query the table. Or I can come over here right click and say open table browser what this will do will open it'll open a um, internet browser and take me to the table just as i have here um, if you looked at uh, one of my previous videos you can see how to use the table browser and there's actually a few different ways we can open a table browser and see all the underlying columns for a table um, so I'm on here and sure enough, I can see a new record called puzzles. It did get inserted um, and we're, we're set. All right, so if I go back to the code, there's one other thing or a couple other things actually that I wanna make note of. One, um, very often, if you're updating data or deleting data, you will see this uh, uh, statement called TTS begin and TTS commit around 
um, your insert or update or delete statement. This is a transaction block. This helps so that if anything goes seriously wrong between this TTS begin and the final commit, um, the system will actually roll back any updates to the database back to um, the state it was when we had this TTS begin. This is really useful. Maybe you're inserting um, three different records into three separate tables all at the same time and they all need to get inserted otherwise um, they don't make sense if one of them gets inserted but not the other two then we're in a bad state well you can use these tts begin and commits to wrap you know that whole multiple insert statements and ensure that um, only if you get to this TTS commit without an error will it actually um, push this data to the database. In the meantime, it's kind of all saved in memory. Um, you can It'll still be there if you try to query it using X++, but it physically won't be written to the database until it gets to this TTS commit. For an update and delete, you must have these TTS begin and commits, and you must always have them in a matching pair, so you can't um, have one TTS begin and then not a corresponding commit. So ne make sure you never put some condition where um, you've got some if statement that's around your TTS commit, but not around your TTS begin. That could cause you to have a mismatch pair of TTS begin and commit and um, then the, the system will throw an error. Um, that said, when we're just doing a single insert, uh, TTS begin and commit are not actually required. They, again, they're required for an update and delete, but we don't actually need them for the insert. As you can see, we still inserted our data here. All right. A um, couple more things. When I call insert, the system's naturally going to go out and get a unique rec ID value and set it on the rec ID field um, in this table buffer and in this table. So if I were to uh, later print out um, the rec ID, it would be populated after the insert. So that's just something to know. We always get a unique uh, rec ID after we call insert. The system's also going to set um, partition and data area ID fields for us underneath the covers. If you don't know what those mean at the moment, no problem, but it's useful to know that the system is running some additional code to insert a couple fields for us. If we've got created date time or modified date time or modified user, created user, all those different properties that we can set on a table right here, um, these will also get set at the time we call insert. Lastly, another cool thing is an insert method can be overridden. So what that means is if I go to um, this item or, or I go to invent item group and I go to methods, you, in here I can see that there's no overridden insert method on this table. But I could right click, say override, and then find the insert method. And it's actually gonna create a um, method for me where I can add code before or after the call to super. The call to super actually does the insert, um, but I can default um, additional fields on this table if I need to. So as an example, if I go to, to the sales line table and I look at this insert method, I can see it's got lots of code to double check things. You know, If there's not a cust account or cust group um, field set on this sales line, it's actually gonna default to those values from the sales table that it finds. So it does a whole lot of code um, that you can add before it actually calls um, super here, which does the actual insert. I can also run code afterwards to um, check anything else or potentially um, you know, insert records into other tables as well. So it's good to know that insert does a whole lot of code. That leads me to kind of the next way we can insert data. We can actually call a method called do insert, but this is actually not recommended. Do insert will skip 
any custom code that we've added in the overridden insert method. Um, so this should only be done in very special um, scenarios where it's very intentional that you do want to bypass all of that code. Usually that code in the insert method is intentional and shouldn't be bypassed. So in general, it is not recommended you call um, do insert. There may be some special cases where um, data has become corrupt, corrupt um, and in a bad state where um, it would make sense to call do insert. But most of the time, we do not want to call do insert. <clears throat> okay, there's a couple other ways to insert data using X++. There is a method called insert database where you can load up a list of records into um, our, an object and then call insert database and this is going to make a single trip to the server to insert all those records into the database. I'm actually going to create a separate video and article to explain that. Um, there's another option as well to insert data called insert um, record set. Insert record set allows you to select a lot of data from you know one or more tables use those values to insert every record that you've uh, found as a result set into a destination table so it's a lot faster in both those cases than just doing you know uh, or I should say an insert record set uh, is faster than doing a while select where we call insert inside a while select statement every single time we can make a single um, trip to the database and insert all those records a whole lot faster than using a while select statement. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Again, I'll go into further detail uh, later. But hopefully you learned something new uh, today. Again, uh, the ability to call dot insert makes this so easy. As you can see, the syntax is very, very simple, but there's a lot to understand of what's happening behind the scenes and how do I you know, override this insert? What other fields are being set? What are the mandatory fields that I must set um, in order for myself to not get an error? Um, all those good things. So hopefully you learned something new today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.